Hello everyone, this is part two of the HVAC laying out procedure. Here what I'm going to show you how to do is to resize the return system as well as resize automatically the supply system via the procedure in Revit. And in addition to that, where I'm also going to show you how to place the fire dampers at the ductwork. Okay, so right now let's start to, let's see, let's start to automatically resize the ductwork because as you can see, all of the ductwork here in the supply is all the same size, most of it, and what you'd like to see the ductwork is tapering off from the supply unit all the way say to the end our ductwork should, duct should start to get smaller and smaller so let's automatically size it and I'll show you how but first what I want to make sure is that our supply ductwork is capped sufficiently so right here may pose a problem so what actually what I'm going to do is let's see end cap but I want to delete this okay now this is a T. Let me delete this. I want to make sure we have no issues when the computer is automatically calculating. Okay, and this is prep work. Okay, so now, and you see here, this ductwork is penetrating this wall. I don't want this elbow. I don't want the rectangular elbow radius 1.5W to terminate inside of a wall so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete I'm actually going to turn this into let's see rectangular elbow okay now just instinctively thinking about physics right when when the airflow goes out of this duct from the supply unit from the air handling unit and it hits this face automatically efficiency is being lost just instinctively you know in our professions that are physics based science based that's just obvious so you would probably want to have a more gradual change in the trajectory of the airflow here but for this particular uh, session I want this squared off and then also I'm going to go to a section view and in this area here you can see again this is our supply this is our air handling unit split system and we want to do this quickly okay this here I don't want it because this is a wall I don't want it terminating there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re let's redesign this system really quickly okay I want this coming in here because we're gonna have our fire dampers next to the wall and so for ease of construction I want to make sure there's no ductwork terminating inside of the wall it's just going straight through okay let's see so pretty much all I'm doing now in a section view is connecting okay so I may need to push this over because we're having issues let me look in escape I'm going to quickly look at my 3d view to see what's going on okay there shouldn't be an issue here it's pretty straightforward all we're doing is we're connecting this one to this one in a straight line a straight vertical line going back to the section okay okay let's see what's going on here there's not enough room okay so we just need to figure out some alternate configurations and right now uh, the, the computer is objecting the uh, Revit is not omnipotent it's going to make mistakes even though you know that's it that it's possible Revit will continuously make space that's why mistakes that's why you need to manually go in and make adjustments okay it can be a bit finicky 
Okay. So let's we're going to configure this now. Okay. Up here. Okay. And then go this way. It's objecting to it. Okay. Now, let's see about this. Section. Go up. And what I want to do is make sure I'm clicking on okay with this horizontal one I want it to terminate here okay now we can see it's terminating and let's delete this and I don't want this to be a T as you can see rectangular T I want it to be okay let's go to the section this can pretty much be an elbow this is not the connection I want okay I'm going to delete this because I specifically want an elbow so until it gives me an elbow we're going to revise this is unacceptable. Okay. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn this into an elbow. Rectangular elbow, here we go. I'm going to move this over. And as you can see, sometimes Revit will object to what you're doing, but you know absolutely that it should be fine. Okay. Now what we have here is a situation that's working. Okay. So let's go to our reflective ceiling plan. Now, let's start with the supply, which is shown in blue. Hover over and click your supply, and then you're going to go to the tab key, and you're going to tab until the entire system is selected. Then you're going to select the system, and what you do is you're going to go up to modify, multi-select, and click duct pipe sizing okay and you see this manifold here rather than friction let's go to velocity and velocity let's go down to larger of connector and calculated okay okay calculating okay now take a look at that now you can see it resized these units and the further away you are from this air handling unit you see that the size is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and that's what I'd like to see nicely proportioned efficient and we're going to do the same thing with the return system hover over and also keep in mind that there may be certain instances where you have you have um, let's say you have a long run of ductwork and when you're resizing you want to allow Revit to resize certain instances of ductwork so what I'm going to do is split some of the ductwork in certain areas to allow Revit allow Revit to do its resizing this is okay these runs are being interrupted okay this looks okay there even may be an instance here and again let's go to a 3d view if you look at this design this design is pretty expensive why because there's unnecessary runs of ductwork we're doing it this way because I want to show you that this here is a diffuser it's a return diffuser and I want you to see how everything relates if, if I put the ductwork right over the diffuser some people may not understand the physics of what's going on the concept of what's going on but this particular design is, a, is it works but it's not as cost efficient as it could be because we have a lot of these redundant redundant runs of ductwork that would just add to cost we could eliminate that okay so what we're doing now let's go back to reflected ceiling plan and we're going to select the return 
we're going to hover over it and then click the tab button multiple times okay now you see this entire supply system is selected okay let's try that again select okay and now what we want to do is we want to go to duct pipe sizing again and we have velocity selected larger of connector and calculated here are certain options here Cal calculate size only match connector size I'm gonna click the third one and some of you MEP engineers you could comment below on your preference okay and we're gonna click OK okay now what you can see happened here let's go to a 3d view is that this ductwork these members here actually increased in size so from where it's being fed you can see the size here and, it, and then it decreases the further away you get from the supply unit it decreases okay let's go to our uh, reflected ceiling plan now what we want to do is we want to add fire dampers like for example if a fire takes place in a machine room we want the damper to shut close immediately so the fire and smoke doesn't spread throughout the entire system because you could have a fire here <laughs> and then essentially what could take place is that your 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 HVAC system will start to <laughs> could potentially start to push fire smoke throughout the entire facility and that's not what you want okay so we're gonna go up to the top systems and it also prevents fire from spreading and you MEP engineers you could if you'd like you could uh, add to some of that commentary in the comments below so we're gonna go over to systems and we're going to select duct accessory and this duct accessory fire damper rectangular simple standard okay and we're going to go right to the wall and we're going to select this here okay now what you can see is that this is showing and again these dampers could be on the outside of the wall right next to the wall it doesn't necessarily have to be right in center but right now we're placing it in the center fabricators or contractors know exactly where to place it okay as per the MEP engineer specifications so the way it's shown now in schematics that's not the way it's shown so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the course and we're gonna put medium okay and now you can see here this damper this fire damper is shown this way looks good okay and then we're going to do the same thing at this wall here go over up to the top systems duct accessory and right now this is the supply system and we're going to place one here there you go and you know what else we'll do let's place a damper on right next to some of the diffusers for supply okay you can say like we may want to give the ability to cut off a section for whatever reason for maintenance okay let's place one I want to place one in a corridor here and also for return I want to place one here and I want to do this for the simple fact that if a maintenance person needs to come and shut off a section of the HVAC he doesn't have to do it by going into somebody's office and disturbing their work etc this corridor is uh, an area where everyone has access to say for example uh, office may be closed or office may be confidential and you don't want a maintenance man going in there looking in <laughs> looking in the HVAC system or turning something off while you work on something that is uh, confidential etc okay and one more time I'm going to place a damper right next to a diffuser just so you can see the process and you might realize go to systems that I actually like placing dampers for whatever reason it's just a nerdy gig thing place a damper there if it was up to me I'd place dampers everywhere as well as other devices and I have a new design of an actual air handling unit that deals with COVID and particulates that would be pretty fascinating I'm gonna create a MEP model of it in the future 
but right now it's in uh, patent pending status. Okay. So now let's go to 3D view. And what you can see is this is a damper here that we have here. You can see those. Okay, and that concludes this uh, tutorial. And again, the dampers are in the wall. Because this is a shear wall. And again, for the people who don't know, a shear wall just means an actual wall that's load bearing. It's acting, it's acting structurally for the building. It's similar, you have these columns. You have these structural columns here. Structural column here. And in this design, that's not a column. Okay, say, for example, look at this column here. This right here is a concrete, concrete encasing a structural column. It's a vertical column. And what I have in this particular design, I'll show you. Because in this design, building design scientist approach, I want you to understand structure, architecture, and all facets of engineering, not just one in isolation. That's why I teach modeling of structure, MEP, as well as architecture. Okay, so now you can see that we have these beams. We have the beams here, and we have the columns. These beams die into this wall. Because our struct the structural model is not existing in the MEP model, so you can't just select it. You have to click Tab and OK. Right now, this is a work in progress, so you can see that there's there's beams here, structural beams. That what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to go and they're supposed to die right at this wall and tie into the wall. They don't go through the wall. Okay. And so this thick shear wall catches the load from these beams and transmits the load downward. And that's what shear walls are. It, it, it helps deal with the shearing movement within the building and other types of loads. And so I don't want to penetrate shear walls with HVAC systems. So in the next design, I will take the mechanical room and completely make sure that my HVAC does not penetrate shear walls. Like when you have a shear wall, you can have a doorway in the shear wall, but for my designs, I do not want my shear wall being penetrated unnecessarily. For circulation, that's fine. Human circulation, but when it comes to when it comes to the the MEP engineers busting through shear walls, I want to keep that at a minimum. Okay. So now in this tutorial, we went over resizing the the ductwork using the automatic procedure in Revit, and we also placed dampers. This concludes this tutorial.